Good morning, everyone. Um, so Peter's presented an awful lot of interesting uh, data there to you, and I think um, when you read the publication, you've all got that in your packs. There's, there's lots of analysis in there um, that Peter, Peter's really has touched on, and, you know, and there's lots of interesting things at ratio analysis, how we join up uh, all the different parts of the accounts, um, looking at profits as a return on equity and things like that. There's lots of uh, uh, detail in the accounts for that. Um, what I'm going to talk about is financing the accounts, and I'm just going to talk about the, what we call the S11 sector, what we call non-financial corporates. These are manufacturing and service companies for you guys. Um, and I'm just going to talk about their financing um, of activity in, in Ireland. And as uh, Peter said, there's lots more data uh, on the publication, and particularly on the, the data bank, uh, rather than what I'm going to talk about uh, in, in quite a high-level uh, set of slides today. So from our infographic from the publication, Peter's talked to you about the middle bit, okay? So output through to uh, acquisition of capital. And I'm going to talk about the details on this, the two ends. So what happens at the start about investment? You get investment and then you see production after that. And then I'm going to talk about the end of the process. So after you've had that production uh, that's occurred in Ireland, you can choose with that surplus or deficit to borrow or lend. And that takes you around in a circular flow back again to the, the, the positions at the end. So that's the full set of accounts. I think you get the picture from the, the great charts Peter put up at the start there, how detailed this is. It, it is complex. Um, let's see what we can do to, to talk you through it. So my focus uh, today is on showing you this uh, non-financial corporate split, uh, domestic and foreign split, on the balance sheets mainly. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, we didn't do an analysis of the financial sector like Peter had uh, for his uh, parts of, of the publication. So I'm just going to talk about the, the S11 uh, manufacturing and, and, and uh, service firms. I'll talk a little bit about the policy use of the data um, uh, using the European Macro Scoreboard as, as an example. We've been working with that for quite uh, some time and it really is really useful to understand domestic and foreign uh, impact on that measure. And then talk a little bit about future work and some of the challenges uh, that we have. Uh, in, in producing the data. Okay. Uh, so so that's, that's the, the main picture, I think, from, from the balance sheets. What, what's the size of this uh, uh, S11 sector, this manufacturing and, and, and service firms in Ireland? Um, if I can get the... Uh, the first thing you'll see is the growth in it, and uh, we've been publishing this for a number of years, and with this publication, you can now decompose that growth. I think the first thing that most of you do uh, is on our uh, interactive uh, graphics on our website is you turn off the foreign stuff, right? You say, okay, well, let's get the foreign and the PLCs out of there and, and see what it looks like, right? You want to see what's going on in the domestic uh, economy. And then I think most of you, when we published it, were surprised with this. So what's this growth coming from? Okay. And, you know, I guess we were too, okay? So <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't alone with that. Um, but one of the things this highlighted to us was that there's uh, lots of things going on in the domestic economy too. Um, and one of the features here that the, the answer to the question of what's going on is that large domestic firms are expanding quite quickly here. So uh, what we found uh, is that you'll see this is on both sides of the balance sheet, so it's assets and liabilities. Um, and the net, is, I'll show you in a moment, is, is, is largely unaffected. So it's, it's the, the assets, too, are going up as well as the liabilities. Um, and I think at the end of my presentation, that's one of my conclusions, we need to do a little bit more on this to tell you about uh, the dynamics there, what's going on uh, with, with large m &Es. So that's, that's the net picture. Um, so the assets are going up, uh, liabilities are going up, too. Um, and then we come across this concept, concept, net financial worth. So I want to talk about net assets, but we're constrained a little bit by how we do things um, in some of the legislation and how we produce these uh, statistics over many years. Um, and I'll show you um, issues of the capital stock in a second. But just to talk a little bit about the, the net position, uh, first of all. So uh, same picture again. We see this large net liabilities occur uh, over this time period. And you see it's dominated by um, foreign uh, firms, and it's really about their uh, financing of, of aircraft and IP. And we've talked about this at length. We, we, we all talk about this uh, quite a bit. So again, you'll probably want to toggle off the series about uh, domestic and foreign firms and see what's going on with, uh, sorry, with, uh, you toggle off the PLCs and foreign firms and leave the Irish-owned uh, firms there. So that's, that's the picture I, I'd give you, the main message from it. The domestic firms are growing in size uh, on, on both sides of the balance sheet and the net positions are, are largely uh, unchanged over the period. 
think that's one of the, the, the big messages from the set of data we produced. We were surprised by the growth too, um, but the net positions uh, are, are largely uh, unchanged. Then you might ask the question about, well, what is this net uh, liabilities? And that takes me back to that concept of net financial worth. Um, the way the European legislation is set up, we don't uh, produce a total balance sheet. Okay, so we don't, we've never had to add in what you know is the capital stock in with the financial assets to compare to the liabilities. If you did, you'd have a balanced, largely balanced balance sheet, assets equal liabilities like you'd normally expect. So I'll try and explain this um, minus uh, 100 billion or so of, of net liabilities for Irish firms, um, just showing you um, one of the charts from the capital stock publication. So. Um, the charts I used are all uh, referenced to the publication that's in your pack, so the 3.4 is, is from the publication you have. Um, uh, this figure is from the links down the bottom of the slide, from the capital stock publication. So I'm going to try and explain what these net liabilities are for. And I've gone into the capital stock publication to one of their main, their headline graphics, and I've turned off all the things that are not relevant to domestic manufacturing and service firms. So I've turned off uh, dwellings or households. I've gotten rid of the aircraft and IP, uh, mainly foreign firms. And I've came down to this category, other buildings and structures. And that's what you'd expect the net liabilities to be. It's, it's commercial premises. It's the premises of um, these firms. Now, obviously, there'll be some transport equipment and, and, and items in there too. We're close uh, to producing the capital stock by institutional sector. We need to do that. We did an experiment uh, a couple of years ago to get um, the total balance sheet. We called it the national balance sheet. We put it out as a publication. I think there's copies down the back of the room if people were looking for that. So conceptually, how do you get to the total uh, by adding the capital stock in with the financial assets and liabilities to get you a total balance sheet so you can see what's going on? What's interesting for Ireland with that one is that you can see the financing uh, that you regularly see here and how the IP and the, the aircraft are financed. So that was a different day's discussion, but that's what that's for, to look at the whole balance sheet so you can see what's going on in the economy. Just then to go on and talk a little bit about um, the policy use of the data and, and what we're going to move on to with future work plans. Uh, I think the scoreboard's a really good example of this. The European um, Macroeconomic Scoreboard was set up in 2011, first run maybe 2014, um, to try and highlight imbalances uh, in the economy. And we've had a couple that we've been dealing with. Um, they're highlighted in red there, house prices, uh, government debt, or foreign uh, liabilities, and private sector debt. And I think you know, house prices and government debt are very well understood. Um, the net IAP, the net liabilities to non-residents, and private sector debt are a little bit harder to understand. Um, so this foreign, on the uh, private sector debt, this foreign domestic split really helps. Um, so if I was to show you the main graphic from private sector debt on the macro scoreboard, it looks like this. So the blue line is the European measure. Um, the red line is the threshold, the warning, the politically set uh, warning threshold. And, you know, we have a lot of questions about the Irish data. Why is our... Uh, private sector debt uh, growing uh, through the period. And um, we clearly know about household deleveraging, the yellow bit there getting smaller and smaller. And we need to understand the NFC, that these are manufacturing and service firms. We need to understand the breakdown of those and what's the risk associated, the possible risk associated for the Irish economy. So the breakdown into foreign and domestic really helps there uh, to take the blue bit out and show that we do have this a set of Irish data from Irish firms and households that's rapidly approaching the, the EU warning threshold and that it's, it's below it um, uh, in 2017 just and, and, and definitely below it then in, in 2018. There's more uh, graphics there. Again, the link is down the bottom of that slide to that publication. That's uh, figure 2.18 uh, and 2.19 actually has more detail on that about where the lending comes from. And it tells you that the Irish firms largely borrow in Ireland and the foreign firms uh, borrow abroad. So there's another dimension to that data. It's a little bit more complicated, but you can look at that uh, if you're interested in it. Then in terms of uh, a little bit about future work, so our manual um, suggests uh, we move towards this uh, more detailed uh, set of data, um, S11, 1, 2, and 3. So, uh, public corporations, um, 
national, private, and foreign uh, controlled corporations. And you know, you asked you asked a good question, Frank, about you know, do any other countries do this? Lots of other countries are about to do this. We're one of the first, I think, to to, to do it. Um, so we have a medium for financial accounts. We have a medium term work agenda. Um, to try and do this, to try and push the split, uh, certainly across Europe, but other countries are, are, are doing it too. So there's a little bit more work involved in this. Um, but one of the things we'd like to do along the way is to um, keep going at the, the, the domestic firms and the split of them. Because what we saw um, presented here today, I guess, is the uh, Irish-owned firms. Uh, we showed you a breakdown of the PLCs and the foreign controlled firms. But one of the problems we encountered there was that growing domestic balance sheet. We were still left with the question, what's going on uh, with that domestic balance sheet? So that extra breakdown in the middle column about domestic firms or foreign trading firms uh, will help with that. So that's one of the ideas. Whenever we see kind of uh, regression analysis on this, you'll always control for size, for firm size, when you're doing this uh, kind of analysis. So, you know, another thing we could look at, which is roughly the same kind of proxy, is firm size. You might want to see the domestic firms split into larger and, and, and smaller um, firms. Um, you might also say some of the things that Peter's produced about NACE breakdowns in, in the data. So maybe within some of these, you'd like to see NACE breakdowns of the data. Um, and we, we could explore that too. But I guess what we've a little bit of experience of is, is this breakdown. Um, looking at the SMEs, the domestic trading firms, and the, the bigger firms that are, that are largely uh, foreign trading, that are all Irish-owned. To give you an example of that, um, we did this last year for the, the FDI publication. We're looking at foreign investment, and we're looking at the characteristics of foreign investment. And this, I guess, was a little bit of a surprise uh, when we produced this. It's the green bar I'm going to talk about uh, in the middle. So when we looked at foreign-owned um, firms, the wages they pay, this is average wages for foreign uh, M&Es, what we called Irish M&Es, and uh, domestic firms, was when we initially produced a foreign domestic split, we said the domestic stuff was heavily polluted, you know, made the analysis difficult by these um, large Irish M&Es. Um, and we saw here is that their wage rates, these uh, large Irish M&Es, could in many cases be um, majority uh, foreign owned. Uh, many of their employees are abroad. Many of their physical assets are abroad too. They really do look like a foreign M&E. Um, and we saw that was certainly there with their wage rates too. They're operating on an international market, paying international uh, wages and not subject to kind of a domestic uh, wage floor. So I think we have a little bit of evidence that we could push uh, the definition a little bit more. And I think if we, when we present this with our international partners and get some feedback on it, we'll see what kind of uh, work they're doing too. Um, but there is quite a bit of work involved in getting every firm uh, uh, classified like that. So finally then, um, a quick summary. So our, our main point was about the uh, S11 manufacturing and service company, uh, domestic and foreign split. Um, and I think a really good example of why we do it and how it's useful is, is to look at the uh, European uh, macro scoreboard. Um, and then we can push this a little bit more um, to look at further uh, international classifications that it's, it's our ESA 2010 uh, manual suggests you might go to a, a further split uh, of the data. And it might help a little bit with understanding uh, the domestic detail. I think that's what we've learned over time, that as we produce more data and show you another breakdown, another round of uh, analysis is, is probably required with the data. Thanks.